Hi everybody, welcome to my Terraria tutorial. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to set up a Terraria server using the Terraria server console, which is found in the Terraria folder, and I'll show you how to get there in a minute. This was actually added to the game in version 1.3 and then enhanced to 1.4, which is the current version at the time of this recording. Now the nice thing about the Terraria server console is that it can be run on an older computer that doesn't have a 3D graphics capable card or if it may not have a whole lot of memory. So this thing is really lightweight, it's very lean and mean, and you don't have to run Terraria, full-blown Terraria in the background to host a server. So that's why I really like it. Now the one drawback is that it, it requires a little bit more um, fiddling around to get to work properly, but that's what this, this tutorial is going to be for. So let's go. Now I'm going to break this tutorial down into three parts. The first part I'll show you how to set up your computer to allow remote connections from the outside world so that your friends can connect from the internet. Secondly, I will show you how to set up the server itself with a configuration file, a custom configuration file for setting things like message of the day, password, um, a ban list, etc. And then finally, I'll show you within the console itself, there are some commands you can use, like setting the time of day in the game. You can kick players, ban players. Um, you can speak right through the console as well. You can chat through the console. Well, you know, you can't really speak through it. If you talk to it, it will not talk back. Trust me, I've tried. But you can type, um, you can type messages in there to talk to the people on the server if you're not on actually playing. So anyway, without further ado, let's get started. So the first order of business is to get your computer visible on the internet so your friends can see it. Now you're most likely behind a router and that's going to block connection attempts. You probably have a firewall built into Windows as well. I'm using Windows 7 here by the way. If you're using Windows 7 or Vista it should look very similar. If you're on XP it might look a little bit different but just try to follow along. Um, so the first thing we need to do is discover what your IP address is so that we can forward it from your router. So let's go down here to the start button. Click on that. Click on your search bar or run. If it says run, type in CMD. That'll bring up this little command window. In the command window, you want to type IP, C-O-N-F-I-G, IP config. Press enter. Now you're going to see a whole bunch of words here. Just scroll back up to the top. And this is what you're looking for, the Ethernet adapter local area connection. You may have a wireless connection, but you want to pick the one that you're connected to the internet with, which is usually the first one right off the top. So IPv4 address is, this is your computer's IP address on the local area network. This is not the external IP address, which is what we're going to have to get later. So write that down. This is mine. My computer is 192.168.1.205. Also take note of your default gateway. 192.168.1.1 is mine. That's a Linksys router. And I need that number so I can forward the port and that's what we're going to do next so go ahead and write those two numbers down and then close that window out and open up a browser window now I already know that I'm using a Linksys router and that my gateway is 192.168.1.1 and you should type in your gateway number here it might be .2.1.0.1 might be 10.10.10.10 depends on how your network is configured but what you're going to do is go to that number, that IP address, hit enter, and you should see a username and a password login screen. So now here we are at our router configuration login screen. Now for most modern routers, the username is admin and the password, password is admin as well, or it might be password. So you can try that combination admin, 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 password. If it's a few years old, you may have to do some digging around. So right now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cancel that out. I'm going to show you how we can discover, or at least attempt to discover, what your username and password is. So if you can't get in using that combination, the most common combination, head over to Google, type in port forward, like so, and it's going to be the top hit most likely. This is portforward.com you'll see this link right here, router, username, and password. Click on that. And then find your manufacturer. So for example, I'm using a Linksys. I'm going to go down here to Linksys. Click on Linksys. 
and then it's going to show me all the different model numbers. So take go take a look at your router, flip it upside down, and you should see somewhere some type of model number, and obviously um, a name, the manufacturer's name. So I've got a WRT something 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 I think. So mine is admin admin, and that's what I'm going to use to log in. So go ahead and do that. If you need help finding that uh, password, just go to portforward.com and, uh, and check it out. And then when you figure that out, come on back and we'll continue on with the next step. Okay, I'm logged in here now to my Linksys router. And as you can see, I've clicked on the applications and gaming. So go ahead and follow along. What you're going to look for is something that says uh, port forwarding or applications and gaming just like that and you might again yours may look a little bit different if you're using a d-link or a netgear but most of the wording is relatively um, similar so it's going to say something like that applications and gaming or port forward so anyway here i am looking at my port forwarding screen and i can choose the port that i want to um, forward and to the to the specific ip address of my computer and that's what all these are for. So I've already got mine added. I've got the application, and I just typed this in. I typed in Terraria. I put in the port number, which is 777. That's the starting number to the ending number. It's only one port that you need to open. Now, in your router, it might look a little bit differently. You may only have one number to put in. Just put that one. The protocol is going to be both. You can choose TCP or UDP, but we want to leave both. And then in the IP address, you want to put in the IP address that we discovered in the IP config window. So my computer's IP address is 205 on the network. And then in mine, I have to enable it to make it active so that the router knows what to do. So basically, here's what happens. When someone connects from the outside world and it hits your router, your router says, oh, we've got a, a connection on port 777, and it answers the phone, so to speak. And then what happens is the router says, oh, we have a, a port forward here. So this is perfect. OK, 777, it looks like we're going to send you to this location right here. 192.168.1.205. Have a nice day. And then that's what it does. It sends you to that, and your Terraria shakes hands with the Terraria server, or your friend's Terraria client, that is, will speak to your server, and then they become friends, and then everybody's talking together. So that's what happens behind the scenes. So just make sure that's all set. So 777, choose both in the protocol, and make sure your IP address is the same, is right. Moving on. Oh, and don't forget to click Save Settings or Submit or whatever the button says so that those settings are actually saved to the router configuration database. Okay, so the next step is we have to add the Terraria Server console program to the firewall. Now, I'm using Windows 7. If you're on Vista, it's going to look the same or very similar. Windows XP might look a little bit different, but in principle, it works the same. So go ahead and click on the Start button, click on Control Panel, click on System and Security, and then click on Windows Firewall. We want to click here on Allow a Program or Feature through the Windows Firewall, basically telling Windows Firewall that, hey, Terraria server is OK. We want to allow it to connect and talk to people that try to connect through the internet. So that's what we're doing here. Now, this is all locked up. I can't make any changes in here until I click on Change Settings. So click on that. If it asks for administrator privileges, you have to be in an administrator account to do this. You might have to type in a password if you're just a standard user. So um, now we're going to scroll down and look for Terraria server. OK, I have a Terraria here. So click on that. Click on Details, and you'll see the location of the Terraria EXE. That's the actual game executable file. That's not the server. We need to add the server. So to do so, we're going to click on Allow Another Program. That's going to open up this window. We're going to Browse. And then we're going to have to find our Steam Apps folder. And it's typically defaults under your C drive, Program Files, Steam. But I've actually installed mine on a data drive. So the only thing in yours that might be different here is the letter. So go to Program Files, scroll down, look for Steam, Steam Apps. Let me make this window a little larger here. There we go. Come on. Steam Apps, Common, and just open them up. 
and then click on the one that says Terraria on the right hand side you see all the files so what we want to do here is click on Terraria server and then click on open and then click add and now we have this one here make sure it's the right one okay that's Terraria this one must be the server one it's gonna say Terraria server.exe so we're gonna have two Terraria's in here and you want to you can do public check both of those the private and the public and then click OK and now that Terraria server can communicate with um, with the outside world however we're still not done because we have to add the ports to the uh, to the firewall as well and this is where a lot of people get hung up and don't and they forget to do this now we have to add the port number 777 to the firewall because that's going to be blocked by default as well so oops didn't mean to jump so fast here what you want to do is go back to your firewall click on advanced settings click on inbound rules and scroll down make sure that's not already in there now I've got a whole bunch of terrarias and these are just programs so what I want to do next is on this side click on a new rule and we're going to choose port and then click next and just leave that on TCP and then over here specific port leave that and type in 7777 that's the port that the server uses click next keep that chosen right there allow the connection and all those can be checked and then you want to type in Terraria, Terraria Server TCP. And click on Finish. And note that it adds it, adds the new rule right here. It's allowed on all profiles. It's enabled. We're good. However, we have to add the UDP port as well. So we'll click on New Rule again. Go to Port, Next, and choose UDP, and type in the same port number seven 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 seven. Next, allow the connection. On all profiles and we can type in Terraria server UDP this time so now we have a TCP and a UDP that's good close that down we can even go check to make sure that they're in here they should be yes they are Terraria server TCP and UDP and these are actual ports see instead of actual file pro program files okay so that's all set there okay so close down the firewall now there is one other thing that may be a pitfall for you if you have Hamachi installed so what we want to do is let's just take Hamachi right out of the picture you don't need Hamachi for this and in fact what we're gonna do is shut Hamachi down so we're going too fast here click on the start button go to control panel network and internet network and sharing I have Hamachi listed right here it is active I want to shut it down because it causes problems for some people so there's two ways to do this you can click on change adapter settings here or just click on Hamachi here and disable it but I'm gonna do it the old-fashioned way change adapter settings right click disable make sure it says disabled go back it should be gone it is gone very good so that done now we can test our connections okay so the next step is to find the Terraria server executable and we're gonna run it now I already have a folder that goes directly to my steam folder if you don't have that you want to go to Explorer just like we did earlier program files steam steam apps common Terraria open up that folder and you should have um, Terraria server right here and you want to use the batch file that says start server so this is going to start up a basic server but we can use this um, before we get into the configuration file just to test our connection we want to make sure that we can connect from the outside world through the I through our I external IP address which is what we're going to discover here in a second so let's uh, go ahead and run start server choose any world I'm just gonna choose my MP world just type in the number 
you create a new world if you don't have one here. Max players, just hit enter. Server report, just hit enter. Server password, none for now. Now it's going to run that world. And that's the console right there. And I'll get into the actual list of commands and how to, how to manage it. But for now, let's go to our browser. Open up your web browser. What we need to do now is get our external IP address. Because that's the number we're going to give out to our friends to connect. All right, so this is relatively simple. Just go to Google and type in what's my IP. All one word. And it's the top hit right here. It's whatsmyip.org. Click on that. And this is your IP address. Your IP address is. So go ahead and write that down. That's the number you will give to your friends. And now we're going to take that and we're going to type it into our client and give it a shot. So close that down. Now we're going to go run Terraria. You can just slide this over. Open up Terraria. So exciting. Drum roll. Click on multiplayer. You're going to join. And I'm going to join right now with Labrat. Because I think my other ones are banned right now in testing. Click on Labrat. And then you're going to type in that IP address that we just discovered from What's My IP. And then uh, click accept. All right. Well, I've already typed in my external IP address. And now I'm at the enter server port, and I did that only because I don't need 100,000 people attempting to connect to my server, which is in my office, and that would be bad. So go ahead and type in the port number now, 7777, click accept. And if you see that, receiving tile data, that's good news. That means we're connected. And there I am, lab rat. I'm in the game. Purple hair and everything. Very cool stuff. So now we can go and configure the server. Um, in the next part, part two of this tutorial. So let's go.